Jill Moritz, a curriculum developer at Oracle. This is part one of a two-part video series focusing on the use of message-based correlation to manage communication between two BPM processes. In this video, I'll show you how to set up correlation between two processes. In part two, I'll demonstrate how to use correlation when iterating through a loop of process instances. So let's get started. When a BPM process communicates with another BPM process, a conversation is used to manage the message exchanges between them. The business of making sure that the correct response is received by the calling instance is called correlation. In most cases, a simple conversation, as you see here, involving two process instances, is correlated automatically by the runtime engine using WS messaging, that is, web service message headers. The conversation used in this case is the default conversation. There are, however, some situations in which automatic correlation is not sufficient and you must use message-based correlation. For instance, automatic correlation isn't available when WS messaging is not supported or when a participant enters a conversation that is in progress having only the data values but no information about the conversation. And one of the most common scenarios is when multiple threads of a process are involved in the conversation, such as when you're iterating through a loop of process instances. In these situations, you would use message-based correlation, either in the context of a named conversation or the default conversation. In this video, we'll be focusing on using message-based correlation with the default conversation. Message-based correlation enables process instances to communicate with each other within a conversation. It works by associating one or more pieces of process data that represent the state of the instance with a correlation key. In this way, the correlation key is used to identify the instance that sent the response. For example, an audit process recognizes a specific order instance using order ID. An inventory service recognizes a specific order item using the combination of order ID and order item ID. This is similar to using a WHERE clause in a SQL SELECT statement. In this example, a caller process sends a message to a reusable subprocess called squaring process, thereby starting a new instance of the squaring process. The send request task in the caller process initiates a correlation key that contains a single property. This property is mapped to a process data object called number. Let's assume that that number has a value of 5. The squaring process is instantiated when the receive request task is executed. Receive tasks can be configured to start the process when used with a none start event as you see here. The squaring process receives some data from the calling process that includes number. It calculates the square of that number, delays execution for one minute, which makes it easier to test this scenario, and then responds to the caller from the send response task, returning both the number, whose value is still 5, and its square. The caller determines which instance of the squaring process has the response it's looking for by using the correlation key to match the number value returned in the response. Now let's look at this process in BPM Studio. Here you see the caller process which has not been implemented yet. Um, I've also defined a uh, data object, a business object called work, which contains two attributes, number and square. They're both ints. And I've also defined a process data object of that type called work. Now a work object is mapped into the start event for the caller process, mapped to an argument called arg1. So that's the caller process. Let's take a look at the squaring process. This is a reusable subprocess. The only thing that's implemented here is the script task, which performs the squaring operation on the number and the, a timer event, which creates a one-minute one delay in the process flow, uh, which is uh, helpful to, in order to test multiple instances of this 
process and see whether the correlation is working. Let's go ahead and configure the implementation for the receive request activity. I'm going to check the uh, create instance checkbox so that when a message is received here, it will create an instance of the squaring process. I'll also define an interface which includes an input argument that we'll call arg2 this time of type data.work. And we'll go ahead and map that. We'll map arg2 to work the process data object. Okay. Now looking at the send response, let's configure the implementation for the send response. Again, it's uh, we'll define an interface that uh, sends out an argument, so we'll call it output one, and this is of type same thing data dot work, and we'll map out the work process data object to the output one argument. And that's all we need to do for squaring process. Let's take a look at the caller process now and set it up to use correlation and to call the squaring process. We'll need a, a correlation key and the way to start that is to create a correlation property. So we'll ha it will have a property called number of type int. And there you see it. And we'll create a correlation key that contains that property. We'll call it CK number. And we'll select the number property for it. So there's our correlation key for this in this conversation. Now let's implement the send request task so that it will use correlation and call the uh, squaring process. I'm going to set the message exchange type here to process call and then I'll look up and select squaring process and you notice the target node is set to receive request which is the flow element that receives the message. Now let's map the um, work process data object from this process into the arg2 input that is expected by the squaring process. Now let's define the correlation. I click the correlations link and I'm going to select as property the number property. Notice that it's automatically mapped to arg2.number. Now I'm also going to click the initiates checkbox to indicate that the correlation is, is to be initiated with a value here in this send request task. So whatever number value was passed into this process at startup will be the correlation key value. And we'll now set up the uh, receive response to receive the output from the squaring process and to match the number sent with a correlation key that was initiated in this process. I'm going to select uh, process call once again, squaring process and the target node is send response. Now let's map output one from the incoming message to the work process data object. Let's define the correlation now. I select the number correlation property but I will not select the initiate checkbox because I want the receive task to use the correlation key that was initiated in the send task. Notice that it maps automatically to output.number And that's all we need to do. Uh, the only thing remaining now is to deploy it and test it. Okay, I've deployed the calculator project to the server and then logged into Enterprise Manager as WebLogic. To test this, uh, we'll click the test button and select the service that we want to run initially, which is the caller service. In order to test that the correlation is working, will create three instances within the one minute time frame that the timer process is allowing us. And I'll start off with two for the number 
value, and I'll always use zero for the square. And then I'll go ahead and click Test Web Service, which creates the instance. And then I go back to the Request tab again, and this time I'll, for another one, another instance, and this time I'll choose three and initialize it. And one more. This time I'll choose four and test that. Let's bring the Dashboard tab back so that you can see the three instances that have been created. I used the, the value 2, value 3, for, and value 4. So those will be the correlation key numbers for each of these process instances. So in order to see what happened, let's go ahead and click, click them one at a time and look at the flow trace. And here's the flow trace window. Um, let's click the uh, collar service. And if we select receive response and uh, look at what ha look at the uh, payload for the time when the instance left the activity, that'll show the uh, result that was passed in from the other process. So you'll see here that the number two returned a value from the squaring process of four. So that matched up as it should have. And try the second one. Once again, I'll click the the caller and um, receive response and when the instance left the activity oops I guess I named I gave that a 35 value instead of 3 uh, at any rate it returned the correct square so it's talking to the right instance of the um, uh, squaring process let's go back I'll click the next one here this one should have a value of 4 for the number And it, it did indeed return the right value for the square of 4, which is 16. So as you can see, the correlation worked to um, manage the, con the three different conversations with three different instances of each process. So I hope this demonstration was helpful. That completes this video demo. Be sure to watch part two of this series to learn how to use correlation in more complex scenarios. I'm Jill Moritz. Thanks for watching.